Walter Percy Chrysler April 2, 1875, to August 18, 1940, was an American automotive industry executive and founder of Chrysler Corporation, now a part of Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. <laughs> Early life Chrysler was born in Wamego, Kansas, the son of Anna Maria and Henry Chrysler. He grew up in Ellis, Kansas, where today his boyhood home is a museum. His father was born in Chatham, Ontario in 1850 and immigrated to the United States after 1858. A Freemason, Chrysler began his career as a machinist and railroad mechanic in Ellis. He took correspondence courses from international correspondence schools in Scranton, Pennsylvania, earning a mechanical degree from the correspondence program. Ancestry Walter Chrysler's father, Henry Hank Chrysler, was a Canadian-American of German and Dutch ancestry. He was an American Civil War veteran who was a locomotive engineer for the Kansas Pacific Railway and its successor, the Union Pacific Railroad. Walter's mother was born in Rocheport, Missouri, and was also of German ancestry. Walter Chrysler was not especially interested in his remote ancestors. His collaborative author Boyden Sparks says that one genealogical researcher reported that he had a sea-going Dutchman among his forebears, one Captain Jan Gerritsen van Dalsen. But that, as to that, Walter Chrysler made it plain to me he was in accord with Jimmy Durante, ancestors? I got millions of them. However, he thought enough of genealogy to include in his autobiography that his father, Hank Chrysler, Canadian-born, had been brought from Chatham, Ontario, to Kansas City when he was only five or six. His forebears had founded Chatham, the family stock was German, eight generations back of me there had come to America one who spelled his name Chrysler, a German palatine. He was one of a group of Protestants who had left their German homeland in the Rhine Valley, gone to the Netherlands, thence to England and embarked, finally, from Plymouth for New York." Other researchers have since traced his ancestors in more detail. Karen Hall's monograph on the subject traces the family tree to a Johann Philipp Kreiler, born in 1672, who left Germany for America in 1709. Kreisler's ancestors came from the Rhineland-Palatinate town of Guntersblum. Topic. Railroad career Chrysler apprenticed in the railroad shops at Ellis as a machinist and railroad mechanic. He then spent a period of years roaming the West, working for various railroads as a roundhouse mechanic with a reputation of being good at valve-setting jobs. Some of his moves were due to restlessness and a too quick temper, but his roaming was also a way to become more well-rounded in his railroad knowledge. He worked his way up through positions such as foreman, superintendent, division master mechanic, and general master mechanic. From 1905-1906, Chrysler worked for the Fort Worth and Denver Railway in Childress in West Texas. He later lived and worked in Olwine, Iowa, at the main shops of the Chicago Great Western where there is a small park dedicated to him. The pinnacle of his railroading career came at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where he became works manager of the Allegheny Locomotive Erecting Shops of the American Locomotive Company, Alco. While working in Pittsburgh, Chrysler lived in the town of Bellevue, the first town outside of Pittsburgh on the north side of the Ohio River. Topic: <laughs> Automotive career. Chrysler's automotive career began in 1911 when he received a summons to meet with James J. Starro, a banker who was a director of Alco. Starro asked him if he had given any thought to automobile manufacture. Chrysler had been an auto enthusiast for over five years by then, and was very interested. Starro arranged a meeting with Charles W. Nash, then president of the Buick Motor Company, who was looking for a smart production chief. Chrysler, who had resigned from many railroading jobs over the years, made his final resignation from railroading to become works manager in charge of production at Buick in Flint, Michigan. He found many ways to reduce the costs of production, such as putting an end to finishing automobile undercarriages with the same luxurious quality of finish that the body warranted. In 1916, William C. Durant, who founded General Motors in 1908, had retaken GM from bankers who had taken over the company. 
Chrysler, who was closely tied to the bankers, submitted his resignation to Durant, then based in New York City. Durant took the first train to Flint to make an attempt to keep Chrysler at the helm of Buick. Durant made the then unheard of salary offer of $10,000 $165,000 in today's dollars a month for three years, with a $500,000 bonus at the end of each year, or $500,000 in stock. Additionally, Chrysler would report directly to Durant, and would have full run of Buick without interference from anyone. Apparently in shock, Chrysler asked Durant to repeat the offer, which he did. Chrysler immediately accepted. Chrysler ran Buick successfully for three more years. Not long after his three-year contract was up, he resigned from his job as president of Buick in 1919. He did not agree with Durant's vision for the future of General Motors. Durant paid Chrysler $10 million for his GM stock. Chrysler had started at Buick in 1911 for $6,000 a year, and left one of the richest men in America. GM replaced Chrysler with Harry H. Bassett a protege who had risen through the ranks at the Weston Mott Axle Manufacturing Company, by then a subsidiary of Buick. Chrysler was then hired to attempt a turnaround by bankers who foresaw the loss of their investment in Willys Overland Motor Company in Toledo, Ohio. He demanded, and received, a salary of $1 million a year for two years, an astonishing amount at that time. When Chrysler left Willys in 1921 after an unsuccessful attempt to wrestle control from John Willys, he acquired a controlling interest in the ailing Maxwell Motor Company. Chrysler phased out Maxwell and absorbed it into his new firm, the Chrysler Corporation, in Detroit, Michigan, in 1925. In addition to his namesake car company, Plymouth and DeSoto Marcus were created, and in 1928 Chrysler purchased Dodge. The same year he financed the construction of the Chrysler Building in New York City, which was completed in 1930. Chrysler was named Time Magazine's Man of the Year for 1928. He was inducted into the Automotive Hall of Fame in 1967. Topic. Later years In 1923, Chrysler purchased a 12-acre waterfront estate at Kings Point on Long Island, New York from Henri Willis Bendel and renamed it, Forker House. In December 1941, the property was sold to the U.S. government's War Shipping Department and became known as Wiley Hall as part of the United States Merchant Marine Academy. He also built a country estate in Warrenton, Virginia, in what is referred to as the Virginia Horse Country and home to the Warrenton Hunt. In 1934, he purchased and undertook a major restoration of the famous Fakir White Sulphur Springs Company Resort and Spa in Warrington. Sold in 1953, the property was developed as a country club, which it remains today. On the estate he inherited, Walter P. Chrysler Jr. established North Wales Stud for the purpose of breeding thoroughbred horses. Chrysler Jr. was part of a syndicate that included friend Alfred G. Vanderbilt II who in 1940 acquired the 1935 English Triple Crown winner Barham from the Aga Khan III. Barham stood at stud at Vanderbilt Sagamore Farm in Maryland then was brought to Chrysler's North Wales stud. Chrysler turned 61 in the spring of 1936 and decided to step down from an active role in the day-to-day -day business of the company. Two years later, Della died at the age of 58 and Walter, devastated at the loss of his childhood sweetheart, suffered a stroke. His previously robust health never recovered from this, and he succumbed to a cerebral hemorrhage in August 1940 at Forker House. He was buried at Sleepy Hollow Cemetery in Sleepy Hollow, New York. Topic see also Carl Breer Owen Ray Skelton Frederick Morell Zetter The Three Musketeers Studebaker Engineers Topic References Topic Bibliography Chrysler, Walter P. Sparks, Boyden 1950 1937, Life of an American Workman, New York, New York, USA, Dodd, Mead & Company, LCCN 38,009,829 First printed as a serialization in the Saturday Evening Post, 1937, and privately printed in book form that year. Later republished in 1950 by Dodd, Mead & Company, New York, with a new postscript by collaborative author Boyden Sparks. Curcio, Vincent 2000, Chrysler, The Life and Times of an Automotive Genius, New York, New York, USA, Oxford University Press, ISBN 978-0-19-507896-1. 
Denslow, William R. 2004, 1957, 10,000 Famous Freemasons, Part 1, Volume 1, From A to J, Paperback Republication ed., Kessinger Publishing, ISBN 978-1-4179-7578-5. Forward by Harry S. Truman. Hall, Karen 1984, Walter P. Chrysler, His German Roots German title, Kreiler Chrysler, Eine Auswanderungsgeschichte. Written in English and German, Schatzingsregister des Kurfalsischen Oberamtes Stromberg, 1683 und 1722, Ludwigschaffen am Rhein, Verlag der Arbeitsgemeinschaft Falsisch Rheinisch Familienkunde e. v. 22, ISSN 0171-1512, archived from the original on 27 October 2009, retrieved 8 August 2010 Topic External links Works by Walter P. Chrysler at Faded Page Canada, Photo of the Bendel Estate at King's Point The Man Who Bet His Dreams, Popular Mechanics, August 1932, pp. 194-198 Walter Chrysler at Find a Grave